<laughs> Something's wrong with the stream deck. It's not responding. Let's see. No, it's not responding. I wonder why. Bummer. That's too bad. How's it going, everybody? I'm going to have to do it all manually. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I can't even click. Like, I can't click my Dr. Pepper thing before I take a drink. Oh, it's going to be a long, long, long stream. Where's Dr. Pepper? Dr. Pepper. There it is. No, oh, that's a Dr. Z's. Almost like Dr. Pepper. Dang. Oh, boy. I'll tell you which one I can push. That one. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? <laughs> oh, I missed all the introductions. Who was here first? Nicholas Nicolau. How's it going? DJ Roscoe. How's it going? Number one, number two. Nick and Quindor's here. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Some call it fun. Richard greeting the programs. Father Time, how are you doing? Hey, my, my goal today, Father Time, because I know you're going to ask. My goal today is to connect that new battery to the bug. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it done. Just because I got so much crap, I got to clear out of the way. But that's the goal. Ah! <laughs> oh, man. Joshua Clark, how's it going, Ro Johan? How's it going? Greetings from the Netherlands. What are you going to break today? ESP32s? Probably, yeah. Gonna break some, gonna break some ESP thirty twos. Maybe break, uh, maybe break a couple other. Uh, what are those things? The um, I'm gonna hook it up to a PoE thing. So the TT Go boards, you know. We'll see about those. So what are you waiting for? I know, right? Who's gonna take my money today? Today your money goes to Real Link. <laughs> How you doing, Jeff? <laughs> uh, so I am gonna take a minute. Take a minute and reboot all things. Yeah, maybe. I wonder why. Why would the I know. I think I know what the problem with the stream deck is. Um, it might be. It might be that uh, I added a monitor. I mean, it's just kind of weird that that would do it. But I added a monitor. So <clears throat> you know, my there was a while back. I got a Blitzwolf um, little portable monitor from Banggood, and I was using it for Raspberry Pi four. I just wasn't using it very much, and then I found an empty spot on my wall. <laughs> so I just, uh, just this morning mounted that, uh, that monitor up there. And I don't know if you can, let me see if I can, can't even, can't even take a picture of it and show you probably. Oh wait, I could probably do this. Oh man. Nothing's working. We'll make it work. I will make it work. Anyways, I got a new monitor up there and I think that might be why the stream deck's not working. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Seems to be partially working. I don't know. Anyways. Um, hopefully I won't. I'm going to probably need this camera today a lot. That's one of the problems. So this was the camera I was going to say. I could show you the. Oh, it's upside down. There's the monitor. It's up above there. See? It's got my email on it. But I really. It's actually a touch screen too, so it's gonna be perfect for let me let me un let me unrotate this. Transformers. Rotate 180. There it is. Okay. So there it is. That guy. And it's uh it is a touch screen. It, right now I don't have the U, the second USB plugged in. To make it a touch screen, but that's going to be my, there's, there's my home assistant blue. And this is going to be my home assistant dashboard and other, whatever other things come up. All right. Now I got to rotate it 180 degrees again. So hooking that up is the only thing I changed. Um, so I wonder if somehow blame the network. Good idea, Martin. I'm sure it probably is. I'm sure it probably is. Why are we advertising Rio Link? The reason we're advertising Rio Link Stone Stone Obscurity is because they uh so I like they've they've done good. Um like I bought my NVR and an additional eight cameras, I think. No, I bought the one that came with eight cameras. And I bought four more cameras. Um but they have sent me a couple of cameras for free. But I liked their stuff enough that I went ahead and said, okay, I'm gonna go in and um you know, that, that's going to be my, 
my camera system. Um, so uh, I asked them last week if they would give me um, a Nin VR for the Hobbit house. And they did. And it just came today. And the one they gave me, there's a link in the description, but the one I have is the few atmosphere cameras. Is this it? No, NVRs. This is the one. The one I have is it's this one. So this one is for the eight cameras. So it's got the ability to have eight cameras. And then you pick your cameras. You pick the cameras you want. And the cameras I have are these. Is this the ones? It's the ones that have, I think it's these. It's the ones that do the um, person detection, car and person detection. So maybe that's not those. I have to go get the box. I didn't bring the box upstairs with me. Not smart. Anyway, um, the real link has really done good stuff. And uh, I've been really happy with them. So I was going to buy this system anyways. They were just kind enough to um, send it to me. And I'm going to put, I think I'm just going to have three cameras up at the Hobbit house and then one camera I'll add to my system down here. You have six real links. Awesome. <laughs> oh, Martin's here. He's a few minutes late. That's okay. We'll start over. <laughs> where is it going about? Where, where's, uh, where's this thing going? Oh, from the land down under. Hey, Paul, how you been, man? How's it going? So anyways, that's, uh, that's it. The NVR. Um, things to like about it. One, it's POE. It's just one cable, which kind of goes along with what we're going to talk about a bit today. So it's POE. It's all one cable, um, with an NVR with, the, with their NVR, uh, you know, it gets continuous recording. So when you need something, you can go back and find it, you know, and the reason for me that that's going to be important up at the Hobbit house is because we're going to rent it out. And so if something gets broken, I want to know who did it, right? Or certainly if somebody comes in the house, I want to know, um, you know, that they came in the house and their app is, their app is really good. And they also have desktop apps. You've seen the desktop app for the, for windows. They have it for Mac and I'll be able to combine on the app. I'll be able to combine this NVR with my other home NVR, excuse me. And, um, my outdoor, uh, pan tilt zoom camera that, uh, is this one, the 4G one, this one, which I love. This thing has been a lifesaver up there. Lifesaver. Love it. 25 bucks a month for AT&T uh, SIM card, but you probably could get a cheaper one from somebody else. I just used AT&T. Um, but man, this thing's been a lifesaver and it works really well as an alarm, which has been uh, a bonus. So since we finished the house, now that we got like furniture and stuff in it, we want to protect it a bit. So I set this camera up now inside the house, pointing at the door, at the front door, and turned on the PIR alarm. So in when there's motion, it screams this alarm and scares the crap out of all of our contractors when they come over. <laughs> Been using Frigate. Frigate RL420 with person detection. Ooh, oh, Frigate is the, is a, is that a, uh, hey, bald guy on TV. Hey, Tycho, how you doing, man? Usually we use Daewoo or Hikvision IP cameras, yeah. This is a new one. I mean, Real Link is a new is a newer brand this last few years, but they're really good. Uh oh, Jared's got a question. Jared, hey, question with Dig Quad and X Lights. I know the Quad has four inputs, but X Lights it only has one IP address for the Quad. So how do I have four inputs in X Lights? You mean outputs from the Quad, right? Um, it's going to probably be how you break it up. Uh, this is, this is a better question, Jared, for some of the pixel heads in, um, in Discord. But my best attempt at answering that question is, uh, you'll probably have to, it'll be, it'll, it'll break it up based on the LED count, the number. That's how, that's how, well, that's how WLED does it. So output one on off the Dig Quad, you can set it to, whatever, the first 200 LEDs. So LED one to 200 or zero to 200. I don't remember one to 200. And then the next one, say you got 50, so it can go 201 to 250. And then the next one can go 251 to 600. Right. And those, that's the actual number of the LEDs. Um, so then when you're doing it in X lights, you probably need to break that up. I don't know if you need to break it up in universes or, or how you break that up other than 
the, the LED number uh, count, like the actual number that it talks back. Oh, lost track of time. Here you are. Well, good. Thanks for being here, sir. Good enough. All right. Boop, boopesh, boopesh. That's awesome. Boopesh Kumar. Thanks for being here for the first time. Right. Okay. Brain fart. That's exactly right. Okay, good. <laughs> Old Bosch still works good. What is that? Uh, Bosch. Is that an, N oh, is that an NVR? What is that? Oh, it's a camera? Oh. Starlight security system. Oh, wow. Ah, cool. Map my remote cams on a map, like map and home assistant. The way they can do that. Ooh, um, you know, in home assistant, you can put them on. If you have a floor plan layout, you could put them on there. Um, I did that. I don't know that it really shows you anything, but you can put them on there and turn them on, turn them off or click on them. You can, you can put them on your, on a floor plan on home assistant, and then you can, when you click on them, you can set it to bring up the picture to show the picture. I'm, I'm not going to try and go into how you would do that exactly, but I know that's possible. Um, long ago I had something set up like that, but that was way, that was like HA, HA floor plan or something. I mean, that was like pre Lovelace. So figured is NVR with real time object detection for IP cameras. Right. Excellent. All right. Forget for 24 seven NVR person detection with my real links. Oh, awesome. Many types of industrial box cameras. Gotcha. Use Bosch. It works. Cool. Cool. And then somebody asked if they wanted to see the whole tell, tell real link, tell them to make a smart camera feature where it blurs up naked people, <laughs> replaces faces with unique emojis. That's a great idea over. That's a great idea. Well, they're going to watch this. So now that now they're going to know real link guys, that's the a, a prime request from uh, Dr. Z's and the subscriber base here to have a, uh, a feature that uh, blurs naked people and puts uh, an emoji, a random emoji on their heads. I think that's a reasonable request. <laughs> All right. So that's that. Um, one, let's get another this other affiliate stuff kind of out of the way as we get started. So Banggood in their usual awesome uh, support of me and all this fun things I like to do. I love to go through their site and just and just pick things for um, for them to send me. And so a couple things that they have sent recently, these, I actually got a bunch of these. I got uh, like four of them, I think it's a battery powered, uh, led light. So the bottom is like a lantern, like a lamp. And then in here, it's actually one of those zappers. And I was like, well, is that really going to work? I don't know if that's going to work. Is that just a purple led? You know, are they just trying to fool us. It actually worked. Like we, me and Zach were up there this weekend and, uh, there's mosquitoes. And we had uh, turned all these on. We had the house open. So all the mosquitoes are flying in the house. Um, so we put, uh, we turned all these on and just set them around different places of the house. And then the next morning, sure enough, I went and looked at them and yeah, they had bugs. They had dead bugs on them. It actually worked. They actually attracted some mosquitoes. And when they touch these little things, they, that actually works. So pretty cool. And it is pretty small. So that is actual, it's a, like a regular size hand there. I mean, it's really pretty small, just kind of a nice, you know, if you're, if you're holding it and walking around, you almost use it like a flashlight. Um, and if it attracts the mosquitoes to that thing instead, Oh, 450 nuts now have 81,500 nuts. <laughs> um, all right. So anyways, Banggood, uh, there's a link for this down in the, in the description as well. And then the other one, you get some problem to show you my orders probably. The other thing is the telescope. Oh, I'm so excited to set this telescope up. Just got it. Barely was just barely getting it out of the box, but uh, we've had, we have such good views of the stars up there at uh, the Hobbit hole that uh, I thought, how could I not have a telescope? So when I saw that they had telescopes, I thought I got to get one. And this one, um, this one has a, a phone accessory. I think that's what that part is. So there's another thing that's a phone accessory. So basically you can put your phone on the eyepiece there. You put your phone camera there on the eyepiece and you can take pictures. So that's super cool. I think that's pretty awesome. So I'm excited to to get up there and play with that. I'll probably take it up this, this coming weekend and, and play with it. So, all right. Bang. Mission accomplished. We've covered everything we need to cover. Have I seen any aliens yet? I've seen, Yona, I've seen the... Um, the uh, SpaceX 
low flying Starlink uh, satellites. That's pretty cool. I mean, they like fly in a line, you know, like that. That'll freak you out for a minute. You'd be like, what the heck? We're being invaded, right? And then you, I was, I said that and I was like, what, what is going on? And then, uh, I don't remember who I was with, but somebody up there, they said, one of our friends, and they said, uh, it's the Starlink, the Starlink satellites, because they're low, they, they fly pretty low. So at night, um, you can see them. You can see them. And it, I don't remember what time it was at night, but I'd like to, I wonder if it's going to, con- I, I can't constantly be a, a string of them like that. It can't be a complete circle around. I don't know. I think those are, wait, we said this before. We talked about this before. And I think Sir Goodenough or somebody else was saying that those are the ones that aren't quite all the way out of orbit or all the way out where they're supposed to be yet or something. Maybe not. I love to buy DigiQuad, but it's not available to India. Oh, really? Really, really expensive with shipping local customs. Is there any way to help me make it locally for personal use? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, Bupesh. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. If you go to quinled.info, uh, Quindor has, so you don't want the pre-assembled ones anymore. You want the digital LEDs and you want the Quin LED digital controllers and you want the quad, you say? Did you say quad? I think you said quad. So pre-assembled for sale, but if you don't want the pre-assembled, here is the guide to build it yourself. Okay. I don't know how updated these are because this is, oh no, that's an ESP32. Yeah. Nope. Never mind. I thought that was a D1 mini, but it's a, it's a mini 32. So this guide, and I will drop it in here. This, that page, that page, um, is, is the, the start of the instructions, right? So he'll, he goes through everything in here with what you need, where it goes. So there's, here's all the parts, right? So you can go through and buy all your parts that you want that you'll need and a link to buy the circuit board from whoever JLB or, 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 uh, um, I can't remember that PCB way, Ah. but then there's a, um, soldering guide as well. And this is really useful because he'll go through and show, he shows you exactly which things to solder first so that you don't, uh, cause yourself, uh, you know, paint yourself in a corner and stuff. So very, very useful. Very great. Very good guide. So this is what, this is what the Unos and the quads were, uh, initially intended for was just for people to build their own. Keaton's here. Hey, Keaton. How's the Lekka Media player? What else are you working on? You, you're not getting tired of a Lekka Media player yet? When you see strings of Starlink satellites, they haven't moved into place yet. There you go. Richard knows. It takes a few weeks to move each satellite to its appropriate orbit. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Has anyone updated to the current version? I have, Ryan. I totally have. But anyways, Boopish, there, there you go, man. There you go. Friar Tuck. Heavensabove.com is... Oh, satellite predictions. Oh, cool. <laughs> I didn't know what you were doing there, Friar Tuck. I thought you were... <laughs> you were a bot like trying to get us to go to some crappy site. No, that's cool. So heavens, heavensabove.com for satellite checking. Oh, that's cool. Well, we've really enjoyed the stargazing up there. Latest carve, check it out. Send it to Discord. Oh, cool, James. Cool, cool. What do you got? What do you got? What do you got? Ooh, that is awesome. I have, I still have to send you my uh, Aidendale logo. Oh, man. I got to zoom out. Dude, that looks amazing. Wow. And is this, this is a laser cutter, James, or this is a CNC? Uh, this has to be laser or something, right? No, because if it was laser, it'd have to go all the way through it, wouldn't it? Man, that's awesome. Dude, that's a crazy good detail. How big is this thing? CNC, gotcha. Anybody work on Tasmoda? KNX, dimmer and shutter function. Ooh. Is there good enough? Anybody else? Nick Kist, you still using connected? Yes, I still am using connected. How has it? Uh, it's good. You know what? It's been good, Nick. Um, it's been good. I haven't had any issues. Um, even though my, like my Wi-Fi has been a problem sometimes that those have been pretty good, but that's not their fault. I don't know what version they're on now. I think, you know, the, the, the connected boards that I have are the very first ones. Um, but what, what I, 
am using now, although I still haven't completely switched over, is the the Arduino Mega. I'm using an Arduino Mega. I would expect though that if you had what I would probably think would be a great combination would be well, you don't even need. I mean, the connected is good. Connected's good and it's out of the box and just works. So if and it's and it's like semi DIY because um, it's not like a big company. You're not it's not Honeywell or something. So um, Nate is the guy that uh, put that project uh, together and and I think he's been pretty successful with it. It was doing really good a year or two ago. Um, so definitely, I'd recommend connected. Uh, right now, I think you could if you're if you're handy with ESP Home um, or Tasmoda even. I don't know how Tasmoda quite so much, but ESP Home for sure. You could uh, you could rig up something with an ESP32 and make it Ethernet. What I've what I was what I've done that I have ready. I just have to actually connect the wires to the sensors. It's really that close. Like I even put it down there in the basement. But that's that Arduino Mega with an Ethernet hat, and then C Sharp Worm, who's one of our dudes, probably been he'll probably show up today at some point. He wrote a bunch of Arduino code to make it like auto discovered and um, uh, brought it into Home Assistant. Uh, let's see, um, C sharp worm, um, mega alarm. Uh, it's it's gonna be on. Does anybody have the link for that? Is there good enough? Do we have a link for that? <laughs> Use the mosquito light on the one person who dislikes this video. <laughs> uh, it's on GitHub. It works great. It really did work great. C Sharp Worm GitHub. So it's probably going to be here. Alarm. This is it. This is it. Yep, this is it. Code written for an Arduino Mega with Ethernet hat. Take the end devices connected to the board as either switch or binary sensor. Publish their information. MQTT allows any home automation system that supports MQTT to work with this, namely Home Assistant. Developed for use uh, in an existing wired home alarm system, mine, the, the binary sensor and switch files can be used or imported into code independent of this to allow for MQTT auto discovery setup. Some modifications may need to be made depending on your use case. So there it is. I will drop this in. It'll description is or la description is just one you remember you have talked about iot link yep and i wanted to use that but i have no idea how input the info into mqtt oh ryan i haven't played with it anymore so i can't really tell you any more about iot link sorry oh schematic instead of on the pcb board oh Uh, uh, schematic. I don't know if he's got the schematic on there. I don't think so. How's it going? Watching your stream after months, feeling like good old home assistant days. How you doing? Dibby dip, dibby a dip. How you doing, man? Thanks for being here. Yeah, I felt like it was a good home assistant day. Currently using Pulse Wave. Pulse Way. Oh. Yeah, IoT Link, I don't remember. I, I started playing with it. That's where you can control your PC from, from Home Assistant or something. Um, okay. Controllers. I don't know that he's going to have the schematic on here. Um, he's got a pinout guide, though. I mean, the pinout guide. No, the pinout guide won't tell you everything. You'd have to ask. You'd have to ask Quindor. But so what it is, what you probably... I don't know if you need all this. If you're going to totally build it from scratch, like on like a breadboard or something, then probably what you want isn't necessarily the schematic for, well, maybe you do. I don't know. You can ask Quindor. Maybe he has it. Maybe he's got it. I don't know if he has this on GitHub or not, honestly. I've always, his website's always been so good. I've never really looked on GitHub. How is my energy dashboard? Let's check it out. There it is. I, I want to mess with this a little bit. I know that you can change the sensors. So right now, the, the only sensor that comes in that I have that comes in natively is the Solar Edge, which is the brand of my inverter. And it, it gives a lot of information, it gives a lot of sensors. But the only one that that uh, it, it shows as compatible with this dashboard by default is the lifetime energy. 
and it does give some and it updates. It'll update a few times throughout the day. But uh, I would like to do I, I have, you know, one that, that that's updated more often. So I would like to have more more lines there. And then this is also a little bit. This is a little bit. Um, deceiving, right? Because right now, 60. So is this for the day energy distribution? So 9.5 kilowatt hours today. That's that. But then 57.9 kilowatt hours. Maybe that's the, the total of all of this together. Yeah, it probably is. That's a total of all that together. So I guess that's right. Yeah, that should be okay. Never mind. I was wondering, I was thinking like, I was thinking that this was, shouldn't be combining it, that it should be this minus that. No, that is, that is how it should be. Because my solar panels, they're providing power to the distribution panel. And the, where I'm measuring is at the distribution panel, the main, the main coming into the distribution panel. So the devices are drawing. So basically what's happening is the solar is getting double counted. So this shouldn't be adding this and this. It should be subtracting this from this. Does that make sense? I think so. What happened to my Mycroft? Ah, I put it away a long time ago. How are you? Are you playing with Mycroft still? Am I happy? Hey, Alion, how you doing? Yes, I'm, I'm thrilled with my solar setup. The only thing I wish I could do is, um, put more panels up. <laughs> fix your dashboard. Can you fix it? How do you fix it? Is there a way? I don't know. I haven't played with the, there's a way. I know there is a way to like set it up, right? You go in here, supervisor. Nope. Uh, developer tools. Nope. Configuration. Yep. And then mm -hmm. check discord. Oh, sweet. Ooh. Wow, so this is what Quindors looks like. Yeah, so that that's that's awesome. So um yes, that's kind of what it should be right here. Something like this. And I don't know why. Wow, man, that's awesome. Yeah. I, I haven't spent enough time setting mine up, obviously. Return to grid. I don't ever make enough to return it to the grid. Very, very small amounts. I need to add return to grid. That'll do it, huh? Return to grid, add return. I do not get money back. I use entity tracking total receive money. I use an entity with current rate, static rate. What if I just say I don't, oh, I do get a static rate. Euros per kilowatt hour. I don't know. I guess I'll just do, I don't get money back. It's, oh, no, nope. has to be something here. Wait. Entity with the current rate. Total compensation. I don't get money back. Why won't it let me save it? Energy return to the grid. Okay. Ah. Ah. Okay. Energy solar edge lifetime. That's the one. Okay. Now let's see what it looks like. Aha! There it is. Yes, that's one. <laughs> Have I set my dollar units in Home Assistant front end? Apparently not. Huh, that's are good enough. Where do I do that? The first 15 LEDs are not lighting up on the new Quinn pre assembled board. Uh oh, Linux Guru Human. Hey, 3D printing newbie, how you doing? Yeah, that's awesome. That's how, that's what it should be. Look at that. Oh, yes. S and self-consumed. 
I'm not sure why. That's funny. First 15 or not, but what are the la what are the rest of them doing? Everything's they're behaving normally after that? And then, you know, I've had my my own dashboard. So look, if we look at my my own dashboard that I've had, let's see how it compares. So so far today, see that that's because my solar sensor is not accurate either because so far today according to this sensor i've made 35.8 kilowatt hours i'm currently making 6.4 so when you look at this it's this isn't very up to date right it's it's it says 9.5 kilowatt hours it should be 30 something so I, what i need to do i'm pretty sure there's a there's a thing that says like if you're if your uh, stuff's not listed here, right? Let's go to supervisor again. This is not what we were going to talk about, by the way, <laughs> but that's okay. Oh, I can't even hit my squirrel buttons. No, oh, man, I got to like go over here and wait a minute. Did you guys, did I play this one for you guys? I have a new squirrel one I like that I just installed. Oh, I got this one. Oh, no, that one didn't work. Dang it. <laughs> this one. There it is. Wing, wing. <laughs> You're using the Solar Ed cloud integration? Well, maybe I need to. <laughs> Set your currency settings, configuration general. It's in there. Okay. Configuration. Let's do that. Because I do, I do know what I get. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Currency. So good enough, you're amazing. You are amazing. I am using metrics though, because that's what I should do. Okay, save. Sweet. Uh, and then now you can do something with your, so when I go here, so let's let's go to solar panels. So if I go to solar production, and if I go add a solar, solar production, the, the only things I have, I have my power monitor, a sensor. This is a um, this is a Sonoff S31 plug, Shelly plug, and then Solar Edge Lifetime. That's 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 all I get. Um, Theo, how you doing, Thomas? Oh, good. Thank you, Thomas, for helping. Big kudos for Thomas for helping uh, try and sort out Linux Guru's problem. Love coming up with automations, isn't it fun? I live in a one bedroom flat, so it's interesting coming up with things. Oh, awesome. <laughs> All right, but here, if you don't have your configuration, uh, you're configuring a statistic, but you couldn't find your source in the dropdown. That's caused by a bug in the integration providing the entity. Integrations need to configure their entities correctly so Home Assistant knows what we need to track statistics for and how. Open an issue. I thought there was a way to do it, though. Dang it. I thought there was a way to fix it. If I go to my solar edge integration, let's 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 go to the solar edge integration. Supervise let's see where is it? Uh solar edge integration. Man, this thing is like really big. It's like all in my face today. It's a little better. We got to compromise. All right, I tried the solar forecast. Uh, where is my solar edge? Solar edge, based on the cloud, right? Right. Enable newly added entities. Enable polling updates. That's all there is to it. Maybe I need to try it again. Needs to be listed in kilowatt hours. A lot only list in watts. Oh, that's what I need to do. That's what I need to do. Dev is right. That's what I need to do. Um, it, is that is that the only thing we need, Dev, is just to have it listed in kilowatt hours? Because if that is, then what we need to do is just create a, a sensor template to convert it from watts to kilowatt hours. Use the same thing for Solar Edge. Does yours come in? Yours must come in as kilowatt hours, though, for some reason. 
What Zigbee dongle am I using? Oh boy. What was the name of it? Um, it's a, oh gosh, the guy sent it to me and it, it, it's a really good one. I, <laughs> name of it though. Dope. Dope. Needs last reset. Oh, it needs a last reset also. Okay, an integration sensor is quite useful. Oh, I wonder. Since it provides power readings in watts, you can use the integration sensor to track how much energy is being spent. Hmm. This configuration provides you with you know, which will have your energy in kilowatt hours. So I need to make this source name unit prefix. What's this round? Oh, rounding, rounding the sensor. So I need to make a sensor with this. That was what they were saying in the new energy dashboard in the home system podcast. I've not used it yet. Okay, good, good, good. I kind of remember that too. Combi. I have the combi, Theo. I have a combi. I have, um, the Sonoff. Those are actually running on my old home assistant, which really isn't doing anything anymore. The one I have is a new one. Oh my gosh. What's the name of it? It's really bad that I don't know. I hate to unplug it though and like jack everything up. Um, gosh, man, who are the guys? Uh, so, uh, the combi worked good. Let me see if I can find the email from these guys. It's going to be a long stream today. I think L labs, E L E labs, Zigbee adapter. They shipped it. Get up, get up. Let's see. Here it is. USB eLabs. Yes. This is it. Okay. This is the one that I have. Oh, I got to get it all the way over to this other monitor. This is the one I have. And it works great. It works fantastic, honestly. Something with a 256X chip. is the, And that... Yeah, that, 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 I don't know if that's what this has or not. Compatible microcontroller. This has the EFR32 MG13 is the chip. So I will put this in the description because these guys gave it to me a long time ago and it's been really good. It is a nice small dongle and it works. Template won't work for me to convert to kilowatt hours. Thies, is that right? I think this is what we need to do. Thies, let's try this. Let's try this. Let's try creating a sensor like this. But then it does need last. So, so it does need last reset also, doesn't it? How do we do that? Oh, check the hardware in the supervisor tab. Yeah, that would be the, that would be the thing to do. But now we already did it. Just use lifetime energy auto created right there. Hmm. Well, maybe, maybe. I don't know. And it looks like it's, oh, there's, oh, oh, no, you know what? It's just a timing. It's just timing. Is it every so many hours? Let's see, 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So it's just every so many hours. That's what it is. So now, now it's right. All I had to do, <laughs> I did do is say it, and there it is. So it just doesn't update it. Uh, so that's every six hours, it looks like. It updates every six hours, which is great. That's fine. Good enough. It's good enough for me. That might be something on the solar edge maybe that I did. You also tried that one. It didn't work. Dang. Do you still need the USB extension with that Zigbee dongle and the Home Assistant Blue? Yeah, Tony Jackson. I am using one. Yes. I am using a, a, a dongle uh, to extend it away from the Home Assistant Blue. Yes. And for everybody, anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about, there was some interference from the from that Odroid device and the Zigbee dongles. And so it was, uh, you had to just, I, I think I have, mine's like a couple feet long. It's just an extension, a USB extension cable, basically. So plug one end into the to the blue, and plug the dongle into the other end, and then I just mount it behind my behind my monitor here, and it works great. Yeah, it must must natively have kilowatt hours, and, and dang, well, uh, you know, post your post your concerns. Go to the go to GitHub and put in an issue and stuff. These and and um, I think they'll, they'll they're going to have to expand it a little bit. 
that's a shame. It's the same with the P. Oh, is it the same with the Pi 4? Oh, I didn't know that. It's, it is, it is unfortunate, but it's not that horrible. It's not that bad. This I love. This is just getting better and better. This is great because this is kind of what I've been trying to do or been doing myself, but now it's all integrated into home system. It makes me warm and fuzzy inside. Warm and fuzzy inside. Okay. Now, what the heck? Adapter. That's the word I want. Thank you. Shelly power meter works. Oh, okay. Well, that, yeah, that's, that's the out, uh, that's, that gives you the use, but what you need is also the, the, um, cons or the, the production, right? You may have already talked about it, but will WLED report to the energy feature? No, no, Nicholas, it won't. Cause WLED is not actually measuring current that it's using. It's just, um, it's just, uh, guesstimating it's 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 calculating what it might use removing the energy tab from the sidebar i don't have energy monitoring equipment oh uh yeah there you can remove stuff from the sidebar how is it you remove stuff from the sidebar animation scene scripts helpers tags other place local zones users general info versus some time Customize. I can't remember how it is. Do you gotta like hold it or something? There it is. <laughs> That's it. So just press on. So just press on the hamburger button here and hold it. And then when it changes, let it go. And then you can take off whatever you want. There you go. We got gotcha. you. I love it when we help. And I don't have a. Oh, my buttons are okay. Oh, I hit it again. I didn't mean to hit the balance of scrolls again. <laughs> okay, so what we're doing... Oh, what? Tesla Powerwall installed tomorrow. Lucky. Lucky. Um, yeah, I have my 16 golf cart batteries on their way from California. <laughs> kind of lame. Not very exciting, but whatever. Got to do what you got to do to get it to get it approved by the state. And then after that, I can use my own batteries and stuff. Okay. What I want to do today is I really want to work on some more POE stuff. All right. So here's the situation. Uh, up at the Hobbit house, we still don't have, like, I still haven't received all of my stuff I need for, um, Lumen Cash, the lighting stuff. I've got some of it, but I don't have all of it yet. Um, I do have a ton of ethernet around the house that I put in for, for ethernet jacks. And, and what I want to do is just go ahead and use a, a, uh, POE switch. So I want an, an active POE switch so that we'll, we can use it or not use it. Right. I don't want it to be passive and just zap everything that gets plugged in. Um, maybe that's not the way it works. You guys will tell me if I'm wrong, but I want to just use uh, a PoE switch and then in the outlet uh, it, where the, where the, um, the, the jack is the RJ 45 jack in the wall. Um, I want to just use, um, you know, some PoE splitter or something either, either use like these TT go, uh, boards that I have maybe do a splitter and use the ESP, you know, the, the Quinn LED ESP 32s. Oh, those are way too, those are way too precious for me to waste on myself. <laughs> Let, I got to get those to people who really need them. Um, uh, and then, you know, just have the ability to just like charge something or provide, you know, a, a little bit of light, just a little bit of LED might as well get POE plus. Let's look at POE plus Rambozo. So let's talk about PoE. So first knowing that I have, let's, let's talk about this. You guys can teach me. Okay. There's a lot of you guys that are network gurus and I am not Luis. How's it going, man? Um, the, I have cat five E cable. Okay. I don't have cat six. So can I first question Rambozo is, can I do, can I do a PoE plus, uh, with cat five E? Yes, can do POE. Oh, wait. Uh, is it POE? Oh, 
it just it took the way of the plus. <laughs> it's even not the new, it's PoE plus plus. Oh my gosh. Higher cat makes PoE worse. Isn't that so? Well, how about that? Monitors are okay for permanent installs like water and dryer. Oh, see. oh good, 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 good. Sonoff R2 power. That's awesome. Cause the higher cat, the longer the wire due to the twist. Oh, is that so? Well, so now I thought that was that I thought that six had a, uh, some bigger wires. Difference, uh, standard PoE is that center. The difference between says maximum amount of power they provide over the Cat5 cabling. Maximum amount of power for is 15 watts. Maximum PoE plus is 25 watts. Yeah, I think 25. That would be awesome. That would be so, so awesome. Farhan, how's it going, man? Farhan, how you doing? We just got a solution. Length is hard on PoE. How far is too far? We'll want 24 or 26. None of that 30 gauge wire. Well, I don't even know, Patrick. I, I got, what I got is Cat 5E. You know, I could show you what I got. It will really depend. If the wire size itself is a thicker one, that would mitigate it. And twist also depends on Cat 6A, 7A, et cetera. Oh gosh. All right, I have Cat 5E. If I can only get 15 watts, that's okay. Because 15 watts, I mean, if I if that's enough to like charge a phone or run a Raspberry Pi or something, I mean, that's it's not nothing, right? People will run the full 100 meter, 320 feet. Okay, it's it's not anything longer than 320 feet, not even close. Yeah, not even close. I mean, the longest run might be 80. No, yeah, no, maybe 100 feet, maybe 100. Feet. The longest, one single longest run I can think of might be 100 feet. Which brand is the cable? Um, I got it all from Amazon. I did get, I did make sure to get the, the copper, not the copper clad, whatever, you know. It didn't look like this. Looks like these are all sponsored, sponsored, sponsored. Cat 5e, and it was like, I, I was ordering, I think it was a thousand feet. This, this is what I got. 24 gauge. Yep, look at that, purchased. I bought two boxes of this. Well, this is, I bought a box of blue for this that we're talking about for PoE, and then I bought a box of uh, yellow for the lighting. Cheap ones are aluminum and can't conduct well. There are more differences. You enjoy making Cat5 cables? <laughs> like, you like twisting the little pairs together, <laughs> Nicholas? <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> you mean like making your own, putting your tips on it? I was, I, my fingers got raw from uh, putting on a, uh, ends uh on the on the ends of the cable this weekend up there oh my gosh ha wi-fi ha low ofra i have not heard about that but you're gonna squirrel me aren't you you're squirreling me wi-fi alliance i haven't heard about it build on the power saving modes of traditional wi-fi for okay good all right, let's see. You can put 48 volts in the final put step down voltage. That's right, Nicholas. That's and that's so what I've got here. Uh let's look at my shopping cart on Amazon. Um I need packing tape. <laughs> but what I was thinking is I would get some of these. And I know Quindor, you did a bunch of you did a bunch of AliExpress reviews of it, right? Which was really cool. 1 gigahertz Wi-Fi. Oh, that's awesome. Um <coughs> So I was thinking I'd get a pack of these just to play with. I don't even know what exactly I'm going to use them for. Um, the pass-through ones. I, I did use the pass-through ones. I still had to use my fingers a lot, though, I felt like. 
use the ends that let the pass through wires. So when you get to the end, Rambozo, when you get to the, so I pass them through, pass the wires all through the end. And then I got to cut them off. I got to cut those wires off somehow. How do I do this? So I was hoping to get some of these. And so do you have in here which ones you would use? These are the quality ones. Oh. I like that. I wonder about. And you, all the ones you tested, were all the ones you tested from AliExpress? Did okay. Oh, it didn't even go to the right one. Twenty watt. These ones are probably crap. Depending on what you're going to draw, the cheap ones can work fine. Get one with an integrated integrated isolation. These are the only ones that I saw on Amazon. Here, just check them out, Quindor, for me real quick if you got a second. And just see if you think those are worth the crap. I, I don't even know. I, this would be for like charging a phone. That that would be kind of the main the main purpose I would think for this. I would like though, and I, and I think what I will do potentially is get some of these twelve volt ones and use them to power a little bit of LEDs, just a couple little little strips. You can do a little bit of lighting with these. Is was kind of what I was thinking. Nothing nothing major, but just a like a you know because I, I want to put um like fake candles, you know, and I thought this would be a nice way to do those fake candles without having to run an extension cord and a bunch of stuff. Not all cat connectors put the ends through. There's little power splitters for all kinds of networks projects. Good. It's all academic. We all know that Dr. Z's will join the cat five cable with electrical tape and it's normal. <laughs> I just bite it. If I can't cut the little ends off, I just bite them. What's the big deal? The swatch per port. Okay, so let's let's start with the let's start with this, fellas. Since we're since we're uh, we're advising Doctor Z's today, so let's start with a switch. Okay, it doesn't need to be a managed switch. I'll tell you that right up right off now. We don't have to go unify managed switch. Don't need it. Uh, I do want it to be. Um, you know, an, uh, an active POE so that I can plug. So if somebody just plugs in their laptop, it's not going to do any problem. Why use POE and not just a wire? Because I also want to connect. Um, I want to do communication to it. Nye, and I don't want to do Wi-Fi. So the, the end goal here. And I actually have, I do have a switch we can play with here. This is a, this is a passive uh, switch that we can play with that I got from Banggood like a long time ago, or maybe I bought it from AliExpress. I think I bought this one from AliExpress a while ago. Very generic. So I wouldn't pull more than one amp out of those continuously. So five watts basically. Okay. Well, um, I might get them. I'm going to get them probably just to, just to play with them and I'll order better ones from AliExpress, the ones you recommend. Um, but I'll, I'll, I'll just buy one pack of those and, and go with that. Um, oh, so what I was saying for, uh, Nye is these guys. So these are POE ESP32 development boards and I got one, uh, well, I got a bunch of them, but I got one all set up, uh, with an ESP home sketch, uh, and it can, it would be able to do things like run a relay run some sensors, run, you know, uh, take data from some switches. So you press a button and, and because it's ethernet, it'll connect to my network and it'll show up as a device for home assistant. And so I can do all these things through this. So that's, that's what I want to do. What I don't know on this guy, what I would like to, what I would like to find out is how much power can I pass through this thing? Like if I connect this thing to 
some LEDs, how many is too many? So this is the TT Go PSP32 Ethernet. So it's this guy. So we're going to go to their website and I want to see what this says about like, and I'm going to give you guys the link so you can, you just mess with me. Okay. Till it says pop. <laughs> well, I got enough of them. I can pop a couple if we needed to. Um, I want to see what it says about, wait, what do we got in here? Cause I'm wondering, cause it's got to have some way to output some power, right? SD card. Power supply specifications, type C, working voltage, maximum output current. There we go. About 1.2 amps. So that's great. So I could just use these. I don't even need those adapters, right? That's what I want to play with. So maybe we're going to do this today. You also need to look at how much power each port will provide and your budgeted amount total. Good point. So anyways, this is, this is promising. This is promising. So I think that I could potentially, I mean, like 1.2 1, 1 amps. I mean, I, I'm talking about like one, one little light, you know, one little candle or, or, or a, 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 a bundle of maybe four or five RGB LEDs in it, like a little candle to make it flicker, you know, um, that's what I'm talking about doing. Um, and this could do that. This could totally do that. That's interesting. Okay, great. Well, that's good news. We're going to play with that. Um, so the next thing was, oh, let's go back to the switch. Let's go back to the switch. So, so this was one that I looked at that I already dropped a link in there for you guys to tell me if this is portable. Read maximum as maximum. Not sure I'd trust the run continuously. So five watts and then subtract the, the ESP uses itself. Okay, good. Only 3.6 volts. Is that what it said? So this is what it can, oh, power supply input. Oh, it only gives three volts output. Is that right? Glasses. Links, please. Links, please. Um, yep, thank you. Yes, because we can all look at these things together. And then we can, and then I give you guys this. This is Quindor's summary of his of excellent video that he did or live stream. Excellent, excellent work. This is the one I'm contemplating, but I'm happy to take suggestions for something else. Just not unify managed switch for $700 or something like that. I don't need that. <laughs> Make sure to run tests, thermal camera, etc. Good idea. We could do some of that today. So um, we got to talk about 12 hour stream too, guys. We got to schedule 12 hour stream. I don't know when. All right. What do we got in here? Let's see. I'm trying to see if this has a five volt pin. Three volt, three volt. Dang it. Okay. Well. Hmm. That's too bad. All of a sudden, my hopes are dashed. Hmm. Hmm. We won't get our 12 hour stream until after the button arrives. <laughs> oh, speaking of, I, they haven't, man, we are just squirreling like crazy today. They haven't uh, sent me or they haven't given me like the notification about the button yet. Anyways, I'm going to go here to the studio. It should say. Dashboard. Just checking to see if they've said. No. No. Nope. They have not. Oh, Brian Lowe subscribed. Oh, that's awesome. I was watching some of his videos about other things. All right. Well, I'm going to have to contact them then and be like, dudes. I've got like ten a uh, hundred thousand and six subscribers. Where's my button? Three volts. That is a shame. Dang. See what you get. Yeah. 
thousand dollar five hundred watt forty eight port Unify switch. It's lovely. You can write it off as an expense. Yeah. I don't. So the, I don't need to. I don't want to manage it because I don't know that. I I just get myself into trouble when I try managing too many too many uh, <laughs> inter, uh, networking kinds of things. All right. So we're gonna plug in this PoE port here. The switch that I do have. Okay, and we actually even have a network cable so we can actually connect it to my network. <laughs> I'm guessing it's T1. Okay, and then I'm going to need Ethernet. Hold on. Oh, son of a gun, I didn't know I had two of these. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Let's plug this guy in. And, uh, power part, and then plug it in here. Ta-da! So, I will show you on the... Hey, it's working now! Stream Deck's working. <laughs> go figure. Wait long enough and things fix themselves. Let's see. Oh, my camera's still upside down. I gotta fix my camera. You have some current available. Maybe a boost if it's only three. Yeah, good call. Good call. Mm -hmm. mm, there we go. Yep, now it's correct. Okay. So there we go. So it's so it's got the light. I wish I would have marked the one that I did already flash. Because one of these. One of these is already flashed and uh, working in Home Assistant. This USB serial test, web serial test, no. Yeah, it is. Yeah, here it is. Nope, that's Olimax. Never mind. Olimax is not the one. Thank you. TTGO, TTGO, POE32. Nope, it's not that one. So let's see. Maybe it's this other one. Maybe this one. Let's see if it shows up. Yeah, measure the output. Yeah, let's do that. Nope, not yet. That's okay. I knew I know I have the the sketch, so we can always flash it on here again anyway. Alright, let's get a meter. My voltmeter's out in the garage because I was playing. This one should work though. Nope, this is all AC. Oh boy. Okay, so which one of the kids? A piece of paper or something? <laughs> uh, okay, here. I have this, this, this is my pad of paper I've been using lately because I found it in a drawer. There you go. <laughs> Do not put on metal surface. Blue smoke alert. Yeah, thanks. Sorry. I get excited. Drink it up, prepare, watch the dogs work. Ah, nice, Brandon. Nice. Electro boom. What could possibly go wrong? Pop. Psst. Pow. Um. Stress level dropping. <laughs> this is a, this has got a coating on it. You know, this has like, this is, this is not going to be conducted. Well, maybe it is, but if you scratch the paint, it would be. Putting the circuit board on top of the OG antenna shield last week. Did I do that? <laughs> nice graphics. You like that? This is, this is from uh, the Panda Bear one. That tells you how long ago was the last time I played uh, World of Warcraft. Um, okay. So here's the, here's the problem. My voltmeter is in the garage. So in order to, uh, make our measurements, I need to go get it. I don't even have that pocket one anymore. Already hovering over the chip button out collectively voice of reason. Yes, you are. 
You guys keep me out of trouble. So I could call up one of the kids to guest host for a minute um, while I run down and get the voltmeter. You guys all right? What's the boat? Shall we? Shall we? Uh, I wonder if I have it somewhere else. What if I put it somewhere else? Go into the garage. That's what kids are for. All right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go down and get it, and I will send in a kid to uh, to talk to y'all while I'm while I'm going. We'll just have to reflash it. What could possibly go wrong? Give me right back. Hey Dawson, can you come be my guest host for a minute? I am a kid volunteer. And it is. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Time machine. What's up, DIY repairs? Hello. Hi, Mike. Hi. Yeah, my with my hoodie. Yes, I am volunteering what would that do how's the sunburn oh oh I was at a day in the lake and it hurts um I don't know what paper to move they said I should move a paper but I didn't <laughs> move the paper yeah <laughs> no because what they, what they think what they're saying is if you move the paper, then that touches this and goes spark. Oh, actually? I don't think so. But it's probably best to have the paper. Well, I want to try it now. Well, hey. I, oh, okay. <laughs> but you got to keep talking because I ate a cracker. He ate a cracker. Video froze. Just kidding, we didn't freeze. What? How did how did he do that? The swirly. The what? The swirly. Oh, I don't know. But bro, child abuse. <laughs> I do need a voltmeter in every room. Thank you, buddy. I'll take your Dr. Oh. Pepper instead of a knuckle. Dang it! I just lost my Dr. Pepper. Something is not okay with the stream. Is really? Is it like laggy and messing up? <laughs> Doctor wants a cracker. All right. Glasses. Here we go. Did freeze up a bit, did it? Time machine took too much energy. <laughs> I wish I had a week to just like organize my my office. That would be awesome. Maybe my garage too. Just stole it right out of my hand. I know, huh, punk? <laughs> he's so much. He's so much like me. It's scary. All right. Okay. So let's. We got it on. So ground in three volts. So one, two, three, four, six, eight. Just make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So I should have three volts here. Yep. Three point three volts. Where else might there be five? So you know where there might be five volts is on the programmer. Oh. Oh, if I lost my programmer, I would be so, 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 so sad. 
No, it's got to be in here. Programmer's got to be in here. Yeah, there it is. Programmer's in here. If you buy these, if you if you do get these um, these TT Go uh, development boards, you absolutely have to. You must have their little programmer thing. I tried using a regular UART thing; it did not work. Twenty dollar WESP board. This no, this is the um, this is TT Go. This is the TT Go board. It's this one. So uh, let's look and see on this, which I don't think is labeled, if I recall. Ground, three volts, three volts, dang. Three volts, nope, three volts. Three, 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 three. Everywhere's three. On and off pixelated audio breaking freezing crud. It's probably because everybody else in the house is streaming stuff too, maybe. Maybe my PC needs a restart. Let me show the programmer that you had to use. You have to use this. So when you buy these, when you buy these these PoE uh, TT Go boards, you have this costs like another three dollars. You don't need you don't need one for each board because you don't have to keep it connected. You just need it once to get something on it quality took a turn for the worse streaming seems fine there hmm. hmm all good here I wonder what I wonder what uh, this isn't saying that there's anything wrong that doesn't mean there's not notifications performance window Stream quality is good. Zero dropped frames. Oh, you can't see it. <laughs> Use a booster circuit to boost from 3 to 5 or 12. Yeah, that might be what we'll have to do. Dawson's fault. Dawson broke it. Okay, so then the next thing... I've been able to flash that board with the regular UART. Without their flasher. Is that right? Man, I tried. I could not do it. Well, I'm glad you did it. Which, uh, I guess, which flasher did you use? I have one of these old, this the same old ones. I can't remember the name of it. It could be, you know, what part of the problem might have been. I might have been using it on five volts instead of three. That might have been part of the problem. Another part of the problem was I was surprised when I did um, get the programming board that it actually goes on the bottom. I would have thought that like it would have made sense to me to put it up here because this seems to be like where all the components are, you know. But when you do it, you actually put it on the bottom. I can't, you might even have to go this way. can't remember exactly now. It's been a bit. Um, but yeah, it goes upside down. Seemed to me to be upside down like that's, ah, camera. There you go. Like that's that's how it goes when you connect it all with the programmer. So, not what I was expecting when I when I got it to program. Wow, that got huge! What happened? Did I zoom in? <laughs> when did I zoom in? I don't remember zooming in. Things are freaking out, man. Freaking out. Oh, hey, Martin, how you going? How you doing? What do I plan to run on this ESP Home? I plan to run ESP Home, and um, I so. With this is for the Hobbit. Well, what I'm thinking of right now is for the Hobbit house. I got these for my house here. Um, what I'm what I'm thinking to run is a. I think relays and sensors make the most sense. So switches, relays, and sensors. So none of that. I, I think you know we can do a three volt relay, right? There's relay boards that are that are three three volts. I think. Um.
three volt relay board. Should be. Ones that don't need a, they don't need five volts in. If they, if they only need three volts in, then we should be okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So this one, so something like this would work as a relay. Um, I was hoping to do lights. Switchers, sensors, and relays. Oh my. I was hoping to do lights, but uh, even just a little, like one little candle. I guess here's what we'll do, dudes. <laughs> this is the part where we make some smoke. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Because guess what I got right here in my hot little hands? LEDs, baby. LEDs. You know what I'm going to do? Yes, you know what I'm going to do, don't you? <laughs> I'm going to just plug them in. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. I was going to say I love my job. This isn't my job, but I still love this anyways. Okay, we're going to take some um, some jumper wires. And we're going to go from the uh tt go board to um to my little my little lights here because honestly if this is it tft displays oh that would be cool yeah 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 get ready for i do need to get ready for smoke animation so now that like the hobbit hole thing's done it's been so nice to like just have a few minutes here and there to be able to say okay i want to work on a graphic you know that's why i did i did work on um a graphic that I didn't get to show you today because um, I didn't finish editing it, but I got to stay on target graphic. <laughs> Start recording. Here it goes. Okay. Here we go. 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 Flip this guy over. And so you guys want to see the camera. You don't want to see what's up there. You want to see my mists of Pandaria. There we go. Come on. Get up there. There we go. All right. So, oops, that came out. All right, so these bottom pins over here are the three volt pins. So, I'm wondering what's going to happen. Man, a smoking jacket. Oh, yes, Rambozo, you got it, dude. I can do the smoking jacket, no problem. Totally can do the smoking jacket one. Okay, I'm sure I can find a, a emoji with, with the smoking jacket. That's that's funny. Okay. So this may this may go terribly wrong. Just saying. Just saying. This may go terribly wrong. I just put them jumpers like that. Okay. Alright. Around here. Ideally, you know, you solder a little bit on here and you do things the right way, but that's not what this is all about. This is experimentation and learning. Learning and experimentation. Okay, ready? Here goes. See what we got. Aw. Nothing. Dang it. Okay, so... The thing to test first... Since that didn't do anything, the thing to test first is to hook this up to the bench power supply and see if three volts is even enough to make it turn on. Oh, thank you. Thank you for your mucho subscribing. All right, it's, the power supply right now, my bench power supply says 2.4 volts. Okay, nothing's coming out. Maybe I have this backwards. It says plus. Huh. Well, 
totally see plus on that side. So now we're going to definitely destroy this. All right, let's try another one. Let's try a different one. Let's see. Sucky thing, they don't tell me what is plus and minus on these. I think that says plus and minus. This one's bigger. Okay, this is five volts. Nothing. Oh, yeah. So this thing needs like eight volts to light up. Yeah, 7.7 .7 to get anything to come out of this at all. Okay, well, that's good to know. So that probably is the same thing on this other one. Didn't go high enough. There's, uh, let's hope it's got uh, some sort of reverse polarity protection because I did hook it up backwards on purpose when it wasn't working. Yeah, yeah seven volts to do anything. No smoke, no smoke. Dang. Okay. Well, my 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 hope, my hope, hope, hope was that I could just light these up. Um, I still can if I get like a, I still can if I get like a twelve volt splitter. Give it time. Give it time. It'll blow up. <laughs> then there's polarity. Shouldn't matter. You can use those on AC. Ooh. Maybe the bulb's bad. Now we got it. Uh, classic three millimeter RGB with resistors at three GPIOs. Okay. Well, um, and then with three volts, I can't even do like, can't even do RGB LEDs, can I? They're going to want, they're not going to do much with only three volts. I can try. Well, none of these are going to do anything without a data signal anyway, so that's not going to help. Okay. What are their, th yeah, boost converter. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to um, keep these handy though. Let me save these. Add to a list. So boost converter, huh? I'm guessing if I have a boost converter, three, so it goes three volts to 30 volts in and five to 35 out. I actually have some of these. So I'm assuming I'm going to lose some power. RG would work. B is probably out without extra circuitry. Ordinary white LED has a forward voltage of three volts. So, so maybe I could get a, a an LED that's just got that just needs three volts, huh? Probably like the little tiny tiny ones, you know, the little like the ones that come in like an Arduino kit for playing around with. Those would probably work. External PoE box to twelve volts, so that does forty eight to twelve. Then use two bucks three to five for the ESP board and whatever other voltage you need. Dang, that sounds like a pain for a few LEDs max. Yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the boost would work, but it wouldn't do, it wouldn't get me very far. If you have a discrete warm white LED with a resistor, three volts is fine. 
Yeah, that's what I was hoping I would get away with on these. But these get so bright, that's the thing. But what these could do, so this could be, this could be, be the splitter. Like it doesn't even have to be this. This could be for the other things, right? Like this could run, in, 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 I don't need them at the Hobbit house, but it could run sensors. It could run, um, you know, relays, switches, displays, little things like that. Um, and then the, uh, if I got this, this 12 volt splitters, these 12 volt splitters like this, two amp, 12 volt splitters. Let's see how many amps I think. Oops, sorry. Sorry guys. Bang into that again. Let's hook this back up and see what the current draw is on these. Okay, three watts, three watts. That's uh, the max, maxi max max. Three watts, 0.25 amps on 12 volts. Okay, that's that's so I could I could definitely with one of these, I could definitely run that. I could even run a couple of them because it's only I mean I could run a lot of them. It's only this is two amps. That's only a these are a quarter of an amp each. So we could run several of them. The current limit. Tell me about that, sir. Good enough. Tell, tell me about that. What's the current limit? All right. Let's let's try flashing this thing. Let's do the ESP home. Oh wait, I keep getting distracted. Big surprise, right? Totally a big surprise that I'm distracted. Let's talk about the switches. So is a switch like this going to work for me, fellas? Let's talk about that. Is a switch like this going to work? Let's get that let's get that nailed down while I got all my experts here to weigh in. Is a switch like this going to work? Limit them to 20 milliamps or so and you can even run them off a GPIO pin. To make a flickering effect and such. That would be cool, huh? How do you limit them? Like, how do you, how would I do, would I, is that a hardware thing? Like, I, a resistor? Or what, 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 what do I, link it, link it, link it, link it. Let's see, 802.3a. It says... Yes, it does. It says 802.3 AF slash AT compliant automatically detects and identifies PD devices. Oh, 100 megabits per second and unmanaged. So, uh, tell, talk to me about a better one. Fan, fan row. What do you think? Um, series, series resistor limits it. Okay. I don't need, I don't need a ton of speed out of this. Like I don't need, although I would actually, you know, I would be, um, no, maybe not. No, I would be. So this is going to be hooked up. The, 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 the internet at the house is, uh, Starlink. So we will have, you know, ability to stream movies and things. If it's just for IoT stuff, it'd be okay. What would it not be okay for? It would not be okay for like online gaming or like streaming 4K. For the IoT, you need faster for the tablets and laptops. Okay, so maybe if I have one of these that's not... So one of these that I don't need probably 24 ports then. 
I might need like what is PoE G? So there's PoE G versus just PoE. 18 ports and 18 ports. Stream 4K on one screen should be okay. All right. Not okay for Wi Fi access points, Ethernet PCs, laptops, etc. Okay. I don't think I'll have any Wi Fi access points, but I guess what I could do if I needed to. So let's look at some, let's look at a different one. G stands for gigabit. Oh, okay. So that's good. So maybe this instead, maybe this one. Heavily compressed 4K, might as well watch 1080. In that, in the Hobbit house, we do have like a 60 inch TV that's like right in front of the couch. <laughs> so <laughs> part PoE, part regular. Best of both worlds. Is that what this one is, Theo? What do you think? So 1,000 megabits per second. PoE. Yeah, 2 gigabit uplink ports. VLAN. VLAN mode. Really? Sturdy metal case. That's all. So what about this one? What do you think? You have the GS98. That looks good. Make sure you stick with PoE+. Plus. Most accessories... Extra points need PoE plus. Oh, and this is not PoE plus. Oh, no, it is. Yeah, it is. It is. PoE plus. Resolution bandwidth the same as compressed. I'm gonna while we're while we're doing this, that should work. Okay, that's that's a couple positive votes here. Anyone see? A, I don't want to say anybody see a major problem with this because if you do see a major problem with this. Eat that one. Two switches, ten animation stuff. Yeah, I, I I thought about that too, Guido. Thought about that too. Thought about that too. But this one should work for a lot of things. Is it time for dinner? Oh, is my mom here? Oh man. Okay. Um, does mom want to be on TV? All right. Dang it. Okay. I don't think it, it, it. This one is unmanaged. Man, we didn't get very far at all, and I didn't realize dinner was early, and my mom's here. Um. Okay. Are you then 100 meters to the Starlink connection? No. Might be underpowered, but 250 watts. 250 watts, and we've got um, 18 ports. Oh, man. Right? How noisy are the fans? The fan can be as noisy as it wants. It's going to be in a pretty, uh, uh, a pretty isolated room. So I don't mind the noisy fan. Split switches, be my choice. The gigabit would be my choice. Well, this is the gigabit, right? Is this a switch? I know. Split switches. Only a few PoE ports. The gigabit would be my choice then. I think you're probably. Yeah. I'm just wondering what would be plug in. Um. So let's see. What I, what I did, I put a lot of stuff in, and I know for sure that I would want PoE. In probably one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, at least, probably at least a dozen. The rest of them don't have to be. Old Costco switch, oh, Costco switches, price and eBay. Well, maybe because I really only need what would I need the gigabit for? I would only need a couple of them. And this one has how did this one say it has it? And it's got VLANs, built in VLANs. I think I'll give this a go. I think for what we need up there, this would be this will be a go. I mean, it's not like it's breaking the bank. Right? What do you think? Managed would be better, especially if you're a while away. 13 watts per port at 48 volts. Okay. Well, I, I, I shouldn't have to use 13 watts per port. And I've only, I, maximum I could use anyways would be five. So as long as we've got some ports and aren't using any, we should be fine, right? Cisco, they require a bit of knowledge to set up. Yeah, no good. Okay. I'm going to go for this one. I'm going to add this one to the cart. Um, and then the last thing, let's talk about, let's talk about 12 hour stream. 
Just think it over. We'll do. I will, Theo. I think, you know, for, for, yeah, I will. We could talk about it some more too. But I think for up there, having a managed switch is just overkill. I think it is overkill. Because a lot of these devices, no need to make a quick purchase, right? No, no, definitely need to make a quick purchase. Like, I want this to start working. <laughs> Get a known brand. What? I didn't even see what brand that was. Five ratings. Yeah, okay, maybe not. Okay, well, if I just find something with these specs in a brand that's something else, okay. That'll that'll work. Um, that's a good point. Get a known brand at least. Um, okay, 12, 12 hour stream. What the heck are we gonna do? Twelve hour stream. Spyware brand stealing your sensor data. Could be. TP Link or Netgear. Yeah, I, I like that too. Ico Bescu. I think that's what we're gonna do. Can we have a twelve hour stream before the end of August, please? Yeah, Tony, let's do. Let's do. Okay, here's gonna be this is gonna sound crazy. We're going up to the Hobbit House this coming weekend, and we're gonna be there for a while. Um we could do a lot of streaming then. Aruba, Jamaica. Ooh, I wanna be. You need to restart a camera from home. Well, I okay. Uh, I will have I will have uh, my POE NBR up there as well. So, I guess if I I don't know if I can restart those cameras or not. This won't have cameras on it. The cameras will be on the specific one. Um. Let me give some serious thought to doing the 12 hour stream from the Hobbit house next weekend. What do you think? Can I get OBS running on my laptop? Probably can't get OBS running, but well, I can try. I can try, but you know, streaming direct from restream wasn't too bad. That NVR might want a bit more than a hundred. Yeah. Well, this one's got gigabit ports. We will need the video clips. Oh, I see. Do some games of sorts with us. Chess or whatever the kids want. That'd be fun. 12 hours of Starlink. I, I, I'm absolutely sure that it would, that it would drop out at least once. So that, I think it would be fun to do a stream from up there, but because I can at least let's do this. I will, I will stream from the Hobbit hole next weekend. I will stream from the Hobbit hole next weekend and I will see what I can put together and if, in any way I can work out, I don't know that I can do 12 hours up there, but I will work out a long stream. Okay. We'll do something long. We'll, maybe we'll start early in the morning. Um, we'll see. We'll see what we can do. Well, maybe we'll do some Saturday night and some Sunday morning, something like that. Okay. I think that would be fun and it would get us done. We'd get it done before, you know, waiting another week or couple weeks. It would be really cool to just be in the Hobbit house. Zach and a bunch of his friends will be there. So that'll be kind of fun. Um, I can stay up all night or most of the night, you know, whatever. <laughs> so, okay. Anyways, it's dinner time. They're calling for me. So Dawson, you want to give us a sign off? As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. <laughs> okay. Sorry for the abruptness of the, of the stopping guys. I didn't realize we were doing this that early, but let's, let's, I like that plan. So let's plan on that. Um, well, Sir Goodenough and I will we'll chat. Um, and we'll, we'll get, see if we can get it done. I'll try and do a little tour. They'd be so mad at me. Oh my gosh. They'll be so mad at me if I leak it ahead of time. So we'll just not, we won't, we won't reveal that it's the Hobbit house. Can we do that? <laughs> Maybe the people who produce the show won't be watching. <laughs> Anyways. All right, guys.